it's a very simple question. Are you salt? The question is so simple that a lot of people want to answer, well, sure. The question is so simple that a lot of people will say, well, yeah, I'm salt. I'm not talking about how you speak, how you manipulate the Bible or the English language to impress your brother. Are you salt? Are you a preserver of God in the earth? I believe that sometimes we miss a part of a definition, salt. A lot of people think it's just to compliment or to awaken or to be flavorful. But there is a preservative part of salt. That in the days of old, before they had refrigerators, they would hang meat, but they would salt it first. And the salt would help the meat not spoil. So the preservative part of salt keeps bugs away, rot away. Well, some of these things are present in our lives. Some of us walk around with a horde of flies around us because we our attitude is so stank. Some of us walk around with rotten spots on us because we've taken up the things of the world. God is very particular in his word on today and where he is dealing with we should be the salt of the earth. Matthew 5.13 states, we are the salt of the earth. The preservative of God in the earth. Let's read the word. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. God has given an example of salt. I'm going to show y'all in just a moment, but I have to explain something to you. What has happened with salt is that we've left the natural use of what God put us here for. Now, you're going to have to take some notes because there's going to be two scriptures I ain't going to put up here. I want you to go there. Everybody turn to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verse 25 and 26. This expressly gives an understanding of what has taken place. Romans, New Testament. Right after the apostle. Okay. Romans 1, 25, 26. Now some folk might say ouch. Because it's going to hit some folk hard. And this is not a, a scripture. Taken out to pick on any one group. Or anyone, somebody, God is using this scripture to illustrate that we have left the natural instructions given unto man that we may be pleasing to God. Listen, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Now some folk might use that to beat up on people. That ain't the point. God has very expressly explained. We've changed 
the nature he set. He said for us to be the salt of the earth. And we decided uh, to get infused with the earth. That's what we decided to do. We decided to let the earth tell us what we were. He said we are the salt of the earth. Listen. All natural sea salt. I'm going to turn this over so you can see the color on the bottom. It's just white. For years, Morton's was a brand everybody knew. Old folk knew it, you know. We know Morton's salt. Little girl with the umbrella, Morton's salt. All right. And for years, this was fine. We didn't have a problem with this salt. It salted everything. It was used as a preservative in the days of old. Morton's been around for a while. Salt. We're very familiar with this. The world comes along and decides that it wants to change the nature of salt. So the world infused it with smoke. Smoke flavored salt. Brown flakes, rock salt that's been smoked so that you are impressed with the color. <laughs> you are impressed with the enhanced flavor as if God didn't do it right the first time. I hope y'all catching all this because we got a real bad move right now in the earth. Everybody trying to change everything. The natural setting that God set ain't nobody happy with. They went as far as to smoke it. Then they gave it flavors. They say God didn't do it right. So this one is infused with chili lime sea salt. Don't do that, daughter. Mm -hmm. That baby looked at me and smiled because, mm -hmm. yeah, this her. <laughs> the color, the taste, the flavor. San Francisco company decided they was going to do it better. God says, hey, I, I, I didn't do that. Who did this? This is infused salt of the earth. The earth did this. The world did it. Not of the earth. The world. Let me give you one more. Lemon rosemary. Not as if you can't go get a lemon. Cut it. Squeeze. Sprig of rosemary laid on top. No, they got to infuse it in salt. Change the whole composite of salt into lemon, rosemary. Everybody know lemon is, is, a, is a very powerful. And then rosemary is very aromatic. So then they want you to focus on the aromatics and the pungent punch. Not just the salt, which can be complementary. Or overbearing. See, we've taken up a stand that God didn't do it right, so we're going to do it again. Sometimes we even get so engulfed in, in color. You know, some folk try to change their color. Salt used to be white. Now it's pink. And it's a player from the Himalaya. Mm -hmm. Himalayan salt, hello. Players use this salt. That's a joke. I don't know that they do. But Himalayan salt, pink in color. Now salt has lost its original use and it has become decorative. It is decoration you can put on the table. Different colors. When they used to put out a banquet of sauces, now they put out a banquet of salts. I saw, looked up online, I saw black salt. They got charcoal salt. All of these different things speak to one powerful thing. Man's way of slapping God in the face. God declared that we're the salt of the earth. Listen. <laughs> How much will you change to fit in with the world? Are they going to infuse you? Are you going to now become something other than what you're supposed to be? He already said, even the women left the natural affection of what they were supposed to be. 
to go over to the other side to become something else? What do you mean, Bishop? Cosmetic surgeons are rich now. It is an elective surgery thought to only be partaken of by the rich. Now people are saving up for years to get an elective surgery for something that ain't wrong. And they are dying on the table because of it. Why? Because instead of being the salt God made us, we want to smoke a little bit. We want to be smoking hot. Get the reference. Smoke salt. In order for me to be smoking hot, I got to go get a butt lift, a breast enhancement, a tummy tuck, and go ahead and add some, some uh, biceps to my arms. Make my arms look a little meatier. When they bury you, they're going to have to bury you somewhere where toxic waste is. Because ain't nothing in you real. And it ain't going to go away. It's just going to lay there. They're going to dig your body up years later and go, mm, there's some implants. Get them. Ain't nothing going. It ain't going to melt. It ain't going to dissolve. It ain't going to go away. It's just going to be there. What is these two big things down toward the bottom? Oh, those are implant, butt implant. Get them too. We look at these things and we start to take the word of God and not apply it to this subject matter. And sometimes the Christians believe that they can do these things without any kind of recourse. Go to 1 Corinthians 6, 12. It's not in there. Go to 1 Corinthians 6, 12. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthian church that as a believer, a Christian, a person of God, not bound by the law, we can do anything. Because we're not bound by the law. Anything is lawful for us. Now, he wasn't talking about going out committing murder or anything like that. What he was talking about, I'll give you one example. He was talking about eating meat. Because some people believe I can't eat certain meats. So Paul said, for me, it's lawful for me to do. But it is not always expedient. Because then further on, he, co he corrects and, and, and explains that if me eating something offends my brother, I shouldn't do it because it would cause him to error. Huh. Let's read it. First Corinthians six twelve. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. Pay attention. All things are lawful for me. Here's, here's the bring it home point. But I will not be brought under the power of any. You're not just going to walk up in my life and tell me I need this elective surgery. You're not just going to walk up in my life and tell me God is okay with me doing certain things that I know God has said for me not to do. You, you're not going to do that. So the world can't walk up in my life and take over. The world can't walk up in my life and influence me to be offensive to my God. You ain't doing it. You're not going to tell me something that the Bible says is wrong and make it be right. I will not be brought under the power of any. I have a lot of wonderful people in my life. But I am not under the power of any of them. Believe me when I tell you that. God got the right one with me. You can't persuade me. Bishop, come over. Da, 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 da. No, don't think I will. But God bless you. Did you need something from the Lord? We can talk. See, listen, y'all don't know this, but I'm going to tell you. God got me ready a long time ago for my assignment. He told me back before I went to Pennsylvania, he said, look, I'm going to do miracle signs and wonders through you. And one of the avenues I will use, not only in person, but I will allow you to do it over the phone. 
I said, what? He said, yes. As a matter of fact, here of late, he updated it. He said, I will allow you to go on Facebook, see an issue that someone is having, speak deliverance in it, and it shall be so. And they won't know you did it. As a matter of fact, I don't want you known. Y'all have no clue how many times I done prayed over folk on Facebook and they don't know it. I don't need your recognition. What you recognizing me for? I don't need you to recognize me. See where the miracle came from, God. See where the way making came from, God. Folk call me when I was out of state, back in state. Folk are calling me from out of state about certain things. Over the phone, we touch and agree that God is, that God is doing, that God is moving. You've got to remember your natural state from God. We're the salt of the earth. We're the preservers of God in the earth. That's what that means. We preserve the presence of God within us. Whereby he is allowed to stay in the earth he created. Y'all ain't catching it. He's God. He created all of this. And we steadily as a people kick him out. We done kicked him out of school. We done kicked him out of the boardroom. We done kicked him out of the government. We done kicked him out of everything. And then we wonder why people are walking up in those sacred places with guns. What you mean, Bishop? What'd they do to the White House? What was that, the halls of Congress? I don't know what it was. What was it? The insurrection? I think it was at the White House. Where was it? Congress? What it was... Y'all know what we're talking about. Something that ain't never been done. Never. Capital. That's right. On the capital. They, people don't think like that. But when you don't have God in, the enemy free to go up in his place. That's his house now. And he proved it. All the people going up in there. Woman had to lose her life before they got it under control. What's wrong with y'all? If God ain't in it, who is? All right. Glad you understand. If God ain't in it, then I don't care how quiet it is. I don't care how peaceful it may seem on the surface. Don't ever get it twisted. <laughs> the enemy comes only for steal, kill, and destroy. That's it. He don't come to bless. He don't come to make a way to heal. He don't come to cause your life to be pro healed. That ain't no way in his resume. His resume read three things. Steal, kill, and destroy. That's it. So I don't know why he hasn't, I don't know why he hadn't received his eviction notice more often. Being that we are the salt of the earth. We are the ones that issue that eviction notice. Get out of my house. Get out of my job. Get out of my car. What you mean, Bishop? Y'all let the enemy ride shotgun in your car. I don't know why. You better kick him out. If he riding shotgun, anything could happen. Folk try to cut you off. Folk throw you the finger. Folk pull a gun. Folk do all kind of stuff happen. Because God is not riding shotgun. You're no longer the salt of the earth. You're now too salty. What happens when you oversalt food? If you stomach it and you eat it, let's just say you alter your blood pressure, number one. It's going to go high. I don't care how old you are. I don't care who you are. You put all this salt in your system, your blood pressure, do, 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 it's, it's out of control. No telling what else other damage it does. Salt can either be beneficial or salt can destroy. You put salt in a pool, it helps to soften the water. How is that? It's a chemical thing. <laughs> Folk don't understand the powerfulness of salt. And God called us salt. There's a certain amount of power we're supposed to be walking in in the earth. Are you salt? You're going to need to review what you're doing. 
Because the Bible also just said, we just read it, if the salt lost its savor, it's no longer salty. It can no longer preserve. It can no, no longer enhance. It can no, it's good for nothing but traction under the foot. It offers a little traction under the foot. That's it. Are you under somebody's foot right now? Go to Colossians 4, 6. God didn't leave us ignorant. Not only did he tell us that we are salt, he told us how to talk. Some of y'all let y'all mouth fly off at the handle when it shouldn't. I don't care what you're coming up against. I don't care what the enemy presented to you. I don't care how he presented it. You need to make sure that you govern your mouth to be according to what the word of the Lord says it needs to be, to be that example of God that he is looking for. Let your speech be always the first thing that leads out of your mouth is grace. He didn't say let it be seasoned with salt first. He said grace got to come. You've got to speak with intent, kindness, love. He didn't already told us with love he draws us. With love. Why are we always trying to tell folk you sinning and going to hell? And then either, listen, listen, listen. Y'all got to understand the purpose behind this teaching, behind this word of God. Because either they are too salty or they are not salty at all. See, there's a fine line where the salt comes in and it complements at the same time enhancing and waking up. See, that's good word. That's good teaching. I'm not talking about the cotton candy messages that you get. Oh, God is great. You're going to flourish and be great. You're going to be, just trust God and love God because God loves you. And I've never met anyone that God hated. God loves us all. I'm not talking about them. I'm not talking about the other ones that say, you got long hair, you're going to hell. I'm not talking about them either. I'm talking about the ones that'll take the time for their mouths to be quiet and God to speak. So that the seasoning is right. Because with God, he says your mouth ought to speak with grace first. Then it needs to be seasoned with salt. Listen, and the way you do that, you get that right mixture, he says, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Guess what, people? That's not talking about just our meeting of each other, believers. That's talking about your boss, your mama, your daddy, your uncle, your cousins, your friends, your loved ones, strangers on the street. See, if you, if you follow this recipe, you won't miss your opportunity to entertain a, an, an angel unaware. Following this recipe, think about it. You know the Bible tells you that. Be careful how you, how you treat strangers. For you may entertain an angel unaware. Well, if I treat the stranger with grace first, season with a little salt. The angel will be impressed. How do I know an angel can be impressed by an earth dweller? He done showed you too many times. I'll give you just one. The whole host of heaven was impressed with Job. Can anybody remember the story in your head, Job, what happened? Satan came and stood among the sons of God, the angels of God. God called him on it. God himself, not the angels, God gave Job's resume. Have you considered my servant, Job? That's a man that he is just and upright. He eschews evil. Huh? You mean God knew him that way? Absolutely. Not once, but twice. Job's name 
got broadcasted in the heavens and impressed the angels to know that in the earth God got at least one that'll obey, that'll do right, that'll live right, that'll show and preserve God's presence in the earth. How do I know Job was salt in preserving God's presence? He could not have endured all that he endured without God. He couldn't have. Many times in his conversation in the book of Job, Job discusses that he should have been killed at birth. That the day came that I offended my God. I should have died alone to God. I'm sorry. How can any man endure that except without God? We must be the salt of the earth to show the presence of God still here. Too many people are doubting God. Too many people can't see him. Why? You walking around, they don't see him in you? Then what do they see? Self? Your mama, your daddy? Your cousin? The movie star that you idolize? What are people seeing? You're not showing them your God. You're showing them what you think they want to see. We are always trying to impress somebody. Never to impress God. Well, I don't want to make them mad. What hell are they going to put you in? Well, Bishop, what if he try to kill me? Don't be afraid of man who can only kill the body. Be afraid of God who can destroy body and soul. What'd that look like, preacher? It would be as if you never existed. Now, if man come in here and take me out of here, I go to see God. But if God removes me from his presence, I cease to exist. I don't want to know what that is. I don't dream about it. I don't imagine it. I don't have the influence of the world battling in my mind telling me that God doesn't exist. That God ain't this, that God ain't that, you depressed, you depressed. Depressed. I don't have that. And I pray that anybody who knows me would call me and let me know that they're battling with it so we can go to God with it. And get deliverance. I don't want, God don't want us to be conflicted like that in spirit. We must know God is real. Each and every day he gives us. This life is not yours. You don't own it. I, I don't care how old you are. I don't care what you do. You don't own this life. If anybody owns their life, raise your hand. I don't even have to instruct you to tell you don't play with me. Don't nobody in here own their life. God owns it. But we steadily running from him. Not doing what we're supposed to, not being the salt of the earth. The preserver of God being seen in the earth. Mark 9.50. Mark 9.50. It begins by saying three words, salt is good. I love it. God has used two elements or two things to call his people. He said that we are the light. We discussed that a couple of weeks ago. Now he calling us the salt. The preserver of God's presence in the earth. Listen, when the Bible says <laughs> stir up the gift. Well, guess what? If I'm salt and you have lost your savor, I can come along and stir up the salt in you. Oh, let me tell you about God. He's so good. Let me tell you what God is doing in my life. There was a moment when I was low and could not see my way clear to do in and God touched the hearts and minds of his people and caused them to stimulate themselves to do what's right by God and now God 
I'm going to stir up the gift in you. I'm going to rekindle your saltiness. Salt is good. But if the salt have lost its his saltness. King James Version says saltness, not saltiness. Saltness. In other words, if he's lost his purpose, his functionality, hmm, wherewith will ye season it? How you gonna get it seasoned? How you gonna wake up the taste? How you gonna bring meat from bland to tasty to savory? Savory has to do with salt content. How you bring meat from bland to savory? How do you take the wild taste out of wild meat? Well, you can mask it a little bit with salt because it'll wake up the notes that are not wild. It'll wake up the, the, the muscle in the meat to give it a more meaty flavor. Now, some people will use vinegar to kill that wild taste, but salt is a must-have. Listen, have salt in yourself. <laughs> He's not talking about be salty of the mouth. You know, you call me a name, I call your name. He's not talking about that kind of salt. <laughs> That's oversalted, overconfident, overbearing. That's, that's no good. That's too much sodium and not enough. Shh, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> and have peace one with another. If I am to come and to help you stir up the gift in you and reseason your salt, it brings peace one to another. But if I meet you where you are, you angry, I'm angry. You say some ugly, I say some ugly. We both put stuff out there that we can't take back. Now what we do? We go from that point forward with mixed feelings about each other. When God clearly says, have salt within yourself and be at peace one with another. How many times does an outsider come into the house of God and see the people of God looking like they mad to be here? Well, that must not be a good church. Everybody in there frowning. Nobody in there rejoicing. Nobody in there saying thank you. They must not have nothing to be thankful for. Your salt has become bland. It's lost its savor. It's lost its saltness. It is good for nothing but trampling under the foot. What does that mean? Well, God is clearly telling us if we are not going to pursue what God has ordained for our lives, man is going to walk on you. You'll never be able to have what God has assigned to your life. You'll never be able to accomplish the things that God set before you because man will constantly walk on you. Man will constantly misuse you. Man will constantly underpay you. Man will constantly undervalue you. Man will come. That's what it means to be walked on. Yes, sir. And they will never see you, hey, hey, thank you. They'll never see you as an equal. Never. No matter how much education, no matter how much you bring to the table, you will never be their equal. What is the great equalizer? God. He makes us all equal. If God wanted to, God can make that baby know just as much or more than me. If God wanted to. Yes he can. I, I, I firmly believe that. I take no credit for what God says. This is all God. This ain't me. He was the one who told me to go buy all this salt. I want that salt. He told me to go buy it. He said I want you to look for color. I want you to look for flavors. And then you get the regular. I said but God why? He says because my people have become infused with the world that they look like the salt salt is no longer just salt and it was good enough for centuries now all of a sudden we got to get fancy with it the world got to know we in the room we got a hint of garlic we got a hint of smoke we pink 
we black. It's foolishness. Go to First Peter three fifteen. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. God said the salt that I've called you to be is always at the ready to witness to somebody. The salt that I have made you to be is always at the ready to speak a word of encouragement to somebody. Is always at the ready to tell somebody why you feel God rescued you. What's your testimony? What has God done to you today? that allows you the opportunity to function in the total functionality of your mind, heart, body. Has God kept you? Has God raised you? Did you feel something come over your body that you hadn't felt before, but you surrendered it to God and now you feel fine? Or did you wake up thinking that you wasn't gonna have something and God made a way for something to be available for you? We take for granted all of these miracles that take place on a daily basis. And God said, you should always be ready. Seasoned with grace and salt to be a witness of hope to the lost. What's a witness? Well, old folks used to say it all the time. Young folk don't know nothing about this. I don't expect you to know this phrase, baby. I was lost and on my way to hell. Old folks used to say that all the time when they testify. What did that mean? They understood I'm a sinner. I'm only saved by grace. But I'm a sinner. And I was dying on my way to hell. Now my life has meaning, purpose. I live unto God. Whereby I'm no longer dying. But I'm living unto God. No matter what you see my flesh do. Yeah, it's got to lay down one day. But then I shall live with God. So I no longer view death as a painstaking thing. I view death as a transition to greater. I'm going to be with God. I'm going to be with the one that I praise, that I worship, that I look to each and every day to move me. To give me the flexibility of my limbs. To allow me the ability to stand long enough to deliver his word. If y'all don't see that as a miracle, I can't tell you nothing else. When I want to stand, I can't move as fluidly as I'm doing. I can't. Only under the power of God do I live, breathe, move, and have my being. That's it. I'm always ready to testify and tell you, well, God delivered me from being a hoe, smoking. God delivered me from pornography. <gasps> Go ahead and be surprised if you want to. I ain't going to tell nobody secret. I ain't the only one looking at naked women. I ain't going to tell nobody secret. God will give it to me, but it ain't for me to tell. So for people to, y'all can let people tell you that you ain't no good, that you a sinner, that you this and you that, if you want to. You have to know what God rescued you from in order to be an effective witness for somebody else. You have to know your journey. Did God rescue you? 
if you are working process, is God rescuing you? Never be ashamed of where God is bringing you out of. Never be ashamed of where he brought you from. For we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So if anybody going to elevate themselves above you, just look at them and pray for them. Don't say it. Oh, I'm praying for you. People used to do that real bad. Oh, I'm praying for you. What that mean? Be seasoned with grace and salt. Say, I don't know about you, but God rescued me from my for sure apartment. My apartment number was H-E-L-L. -L. That was my apartment number. And my address hadn't changed for years till God delivered me. Now my address says H-E-A-V-E-N. Huh? Yeah. My grandmother said this one time in church, I'm HIV positive. Heaven in view. Really? Uh-huh. I know what God delivered me from. I know the hell he brought me out of. See, some of us may not have to go through the physical hell that the three Hebrew boys went through. But if you look at your life and see the direction of which is going, you know for sure you're finna step on some hot coals. And it ain't gonna be like what they do on earth. You know, they have you walking on these coals, what's over mind and body. Da, da, da. No! The Bible said there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Ah, trying to put the fire out, trying to get the hurt to stop. And that's a forever burn. Ain't no one and done. Ain't no seasonal thing you can just tolerate for a couple of months and then the burning is over. No! You set in hell, fire, and brimstone forever. I believe part of hell will be you'll be able to see those above rejoicing with God, shouting, saying, Hosanna, blessed be God of all. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Elyon, Jehovah my God, bless it. You can get caught up in the fact that I just use the word Jehovah if you want to. I'm not a Jehovah's Witness, but I guess I am. I'm witnessing for Jehovah. He's God. I, don't try to put me in a box. I'm going to tell you right now, God will unlock the key and let me out of the box. Don't put me in no box. He ain't in no box. I don't know why people all got to put folk in a box. We've always got to be ready. Now, don't become, <coughs> don't become so infused with the world. This, that's natural, so let's not use that one. Let's use lemon and rosemary. God is saying don't become so infused with the world and its ideology that you become unusable to him. You can become so overwhelmingly infused with the world that your identity is changed. I feel sorry for the folk who feel like God didn't do a good enough job on their bodies, that they had to go and change them. Watch, <laughs> thank you, Holy Ghost, wait. Watch this, when you get to heaven, and you're standing before Jesus and he judges you and sends you to hell for something. I'm not saying he's sending you because you did this altering surgery. And you're going to say, but Jesus, that wasn't me. He's going to say, well, who are you? I'm so-and-so. Well, no, you're not. I made her. Watch me now, please. I made her a size eight with an A cup. You got triple D's and you a size 16 down below. 35, 46, 32, whatever. You know them numbers. <laughs> Y'all know the numbers. You say, who you say you are? I'm still her. No, you're not. Matter of fact, <laughs> only the righteous shall see God. Bishop, what you saying? Y'all can't get in with all that plastic. Bishop, did you just say, I cracked a joke. 
It's a joke. We all know no flesh can see God and live. So ain't going to be no flesh up there. But you really do need to think how you allowed the infusing of the earth to take place in your life. Are you representing God? Are you representing something else? Do people invite you over because you bring a certain amount of joy and rejoicement? And I feel just safe when you're here. <laughs> That's the presence of God that I preserve in my life because God is a preserver of my life. So I begin to be the salt. And so wherever I go, people recognize God in me. Oh, it's so peaceful when you're around. You think? James 1.6. You don't have to go there. I'm going to read it to you. This is for your learning. If any man among you seem to be religious... Anybody you get to talking to seem to be just religious. And he said in his word, and bridleth not his tongue. Don't govern your mouth. But deceiveth his own heart. What the word say? That man's religion is vain. It's fake to himself. He ain't fooling God. He fooling himself. James 1, 26. We have to remember. We have to live by. We are the salt of the earth. That doesn't mean that that is a right and a contractual demand that we walk around and be salty to everybody. No. He said, first lead with grace. Then he said, season it with salt. Learn how to talk. Learn how to represent yourself. Learn how to represent the God you say is in you. You say you're a Christian. Show me God. I'm going to leave y'all with that one. Because I really want you to consider that. You say you're Christian. All I'm going to say is this. Show me God. I won't see you. You ugly to me. Let me see God in you. Show me God. Come on, let's pray. Father, we thank you for all things. We give you glory, honor, and praise for your word on today. God, have your way in this place. Let your word fall on ears that are attentive. Let the application be known. Let the obedience be followed in Jesus' name. We thank you that we are the salt of the earth. God, stir up the salt in us that we may begin to be preservers of you in the earth, that man might see God through us. We thank you and we bless you. We ask you to be with us this week to cover, keep, guide, and protect. In Jesus' name, motivate and cause us to do what you've called us to do. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. All those who agree, say amen.